Welcome to an introduction to accounting brought to you by Park Bench Tutors. In this podcast, we are going to look at the subject of depreciation. We can calculate depreciation by a number of different methods, and it's those methods for calculating depreciation that we're going to look at today. So let's start. What do we mean by depreciation? In other words, what's depreciation about? It doesn't matter whether you own a Ferrari or a Fiat, the same principle for depreciation is going to apply. Your Ferrari will depreciate, your Fiat will depreciate. So, after one year, the value of your car is less than the price that you paid for it. The price that you paid for it being referred to as the historical cost of the vehicle. After two years, the value is lower than it was at the start of the year. In other words, it's losing value year by year. Generally speaking then, the longer we keep the car, the lower will be its value. However, you are getting the benefit from using the car. Your car has a useful economic life. So each year there's a cost associated with the fall in the value of the car. And spreading the cost of that vehicle over the useful life of the vehicle is the idea that underpins depreciation. At the end, of course, the car may be worth very little. So, how would we define depreciation? Well, according to international standards, the term depreciation is defined as the systematic allocation of the depreciable amount of an asset over its useful life. So remember that important term, useful life, there. And the one that I like better, the statement of standard accounting practice that all fixed assets, except for investment properties and some intangibles, need to be depreciated. That is, it's in order to match the measure of wearing out over the accounting periods which benefit from their use. And I like two terms there. First of all, that it matches their measure of wearing out, and it also refers to the benefits from their use. So which assets then depreciate? Nearly all the non-current or fixed assets are depreciated in accounting. And sometimes the depreciation is fairly clear. If we have plant or equipment or motor vehicles, these will wear out and there will be physical degrading. In other words, we can see the wearing out. Gears don't last forever. Computers and other IT equipment become obsolete as new equipment is made, which is more efficient. Remember those old hefty desktops that we had? or those great big VDU displays, or even the days when we stuck cameras on top of our laptops. Somewhat less obvious is the depreciation of patent and copyright. Patents and copyright depreciate because they are time limited and eventually they will expire. A patent actually may depreciate faster or earlier because of new inventions or discoveries. A mine, an oil field, or a quarry depreciates as the resource is depleted from extraction. So whether it's an oil field or a coal mine, the resource is being depleted year by year. So how will we determine depreciation? We need to know the historical cost, and we need to know the time the asset will have a useful life in the business. And we need an estimate of any residual value at the end of the useful life of the asset, that's sometimes called its scrap value. What do we mean by the historical cost? Well, the historical cost is the original cost of the asset. And that means it is the price that we paid for the asset. It could also mean the cost of producing an asset. If we build a new plant, then the total cost of building becomes the historical cost. Now let's turn to the idea of the useful life. 
Use for life is a measure of the time the asset will be of use to the business, the time it's going to be used in the business. Obviously, some assets are just discarded at the end. A computer can last for many years, but whether the computer remains useful to the business is different. There are still Commodore 64 machines, which most of you will never have heard of. These were the first computers that were brought in for uh, domestic use, home use if you like, and some of those will still run even though they are over 25 years old, but they only ever had 20, sorry, 64 kilobytes of memory. The residual value then. The residual value is the amount that might be gained on the sale of the asset at the end of its useful life. So if we sell our little truck at the end, it's how much we would expect to get for it. We base it on current prices, and we should take into account any selling costs that might be involved in its disposal, and we should also base it on the expected wear and tear. How do we record depreciation in the accounts? It is of course going to be a double entry. We credit an accumulated depreciation account, which essentially decreases fixed assets, and we debit a depreciation expense account, which will increase expenses. Probably the commonest method for depreciation is straight line depreciation. This makes an equal charge for depreciation for each year of the useful life of the asset, and this is obviously then the most commonly used. So if a motor vehicle is purchased for £20,000 and it will be used for five years, and the estimated residual value after that time is 5000 we have all the information we need to depreciate by state straight line depreciation. So depreciation then is the historical cost less the residual value divided by the use for life. In other words, it's the amount that we're going to depreciate divided by the use for life. So if we take the 20000 that we paid on purchase and subtract from that the residual value, the 5000 then we divide that by 5, which will give us 15000 divided by 5, and that will give us 3000 So the depreciation is calculated as £3,000 for each year of the vehicle's useful life. Now we need to make the entry to the accounts. The vehicle originally will have been entered to the account and there will be a debit to non-current assets of vehicles. So what we're going to have is an accumulated depreciation of vehicles account in non-current assets and we will credit that with 3000 and in the operating costs we will have a depreciation expense account and we will debit that with 3000 What happens at the end of the second year? Well, the non-current assets debit remains the same, but the non-current assets accumulated depreciation will now go up to 6,000 because we're going to credit it with another 3,000, and of course we will also put another 3,000 in as a debit to the uh, depreciation expense account. Reducing balance depreciation is somewhat different. Depreciation takes place at a percentage rate. The effect of this method is that depreciation is higher in the early years. The entries to the account are exactly as before. We're going to credit accumulated depreciation account for the non-current or fixed asset. We will de debit the expense account for depreciation. So, suppose a machine was bought for £50,000 and has an estimated life of four years. It has a residual value of £20,000. And we want to calculate the depreciation over the four years. So in the first year, that's fairly easy, it's 50,000 multiplied by 20%, in other words, 20% of the 50,000. In the second year, well, we've already depreciated by 10,000, so we're now depreciating the re remainder, 40,000 by 20%, which comes to 8,000. We would have to take this... 8,000 of the 40,000, we would depreciate the 32,000 by 20%. Obviously, if the percentage was different, then it would be a different calculation, right? We're just using 20% as an example here. And finally, in year 4, we would depreciate 25,600 by 
20%. So our depreciation entries in year 1 for would be 10,000, year 2 8,000, giving accumulated depreciation of 18,000, and so on. We could of course use other methods, but it depends on whether those are acceptable and it depends on whether they are relevant. Sometimes machine hours can be used. Supposing we have a machine with a useful life of 4,000 hours. And we can say that we know what the estimated usage is going to be. In year 1 it will be say 1,500 hours, year 2 1,500, year 3 600 and year 4 400 hours. As the, the machine is getting older what we're saying is it's going to be used less. If the initial cost was 24,000, how are we going to uh, work out the depreciation for each year using machine hours? Well, in year one, if it's got 4,000 hours and we're going to use it for 1,500 in year one, it's that fraction, 1,500 divided by 4,000, multiplied by the historical cost of the machine, which comes to 9,000 pounds and in year two it would be the same because we're using the same number of machine hours so it's 1500 divided by 4000 multiplied by 24000 gives 9000 pounds now in year three we said we'd only be using it for 600 hours so in this case it's 600 divided by 4000 multiplied by 24000 which comes to 3600 and in year four you can see the depreciation works out at 2,400. You might also note that here we've got no residual value because those all add up to 24,000. And finally we could also use something called units of production. This might be so for a car assembly line where you anticipate that only so many units of so many cars are going to actually be produced and this again it means we can measure the use of the machinery on that production line or some pieces of machinery on that production line in terms of units of production so the calculations are going to be of the same type as when we did machine hours except that instead of machine hours we will use units of production as the measurement and one final thing when we deal with depreciation is what happens when we start the financial year, in this case the financial year has been started on January the 1st, but the fixed asset is bought uh, on June the 1st in this case, in other words part way through the year, in this case it's bought for 60,000. Well there are two met methods that can be used. The first method is to charge a full year of depreciation in the year the asset was acquired and then we don't charge any in the year of disposal. In the second method, we would calculate the amount of depreciation by months. So in this case, if it was bought on June the 1st, from June to the end of December are seven complete months. So ABCO would then calculate seven twelfths of a year's depreciation. That ends this little podcast on depreciation, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching.